Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and configure the Synology Drive application on your Synology NAS. Today's video will focus on the server side setup and I will have different videos in the future focusing on the client side for Windows, Android, and iOS. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is from the Synology web portal, click on the main menu, then click on the package center. From there in the search bar on the top left, click type in drive and hit enter. You'll see the drive application as the first result. Click on the in button to install that. And now it is the waiting game. So you guys have a time for a quick coffee break as it installs, which it will take a little while, anywhere from three to five minutes. So go ahead and take a quick coffee break and we will resume right after the break. After your Synology has finished downloading and installing the Drive application, you will now have a button that says Open for Synology Drive. So the moment you click on that though, it's gonna tell you that you need to refresh your page for the best security experience. So go ahead and refresh your page and you'll be brought back to the main web portal for your Synology server. From there, click on the main menu and you'll now see two new brand, uh, brand, two brand new icons for Synology Drive. The first of which is the Drive Admin Console, which today's video is gonna focus on, but you'll also see the Drive application itself. I do have a full video focusing on the Drive application, uh, so if you're interested in that, I'll link that in the description below. But go ahead and click on the Drive Admin Console to proceed with today's tutorial. As the name implies, the Drive Admin Console is gonna be your management portal for everything that goes on with the Drive application, as well as everything that you need to configure. So from the overview tab, you're going to see the current number of accounts and clients that are currently connected to your Synology server through the Drive application. The client tab expands upon this information showing all the clients that are connected. And by connected, I mean that these computers have been set up to sync between your Synology server and the local computer. They don't have to technically be online to be considered connected. So you also have a tab that shows whether they're online or offline at this point in time, as well as their IP address. The IP address will be the last IP address if the computer is currently offline, or the current IP address if the computer is currently online. You also have a, a row or a column that shows the user account that was used to link that computer to your Synology server, so you know which computers belong to which users uh, through that column. Moving on from there, you have the log tab, which is just a simple log that shows all the files that have been transferred from and to uh, your Synology server through the Drive application. Now the team folder is gonna be the focus of today's video is that is where you're gonna set up folders that are gonna be enabled to be accessed through the Drive application. So to enable a folder to be shared or in sync through the Drive application, simply click on that folder and then on the top left, click enable. From there, you're gonna get the option to enable versioning. What a versioning allows you to do is simply replicate what Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and all those different applications allow you to do by restoring an older version that of a certain file. So if someone is working on a report, deletes a paragraph, and later decides they wanna get back, you can restore an older version so they get that paragraph back without having to retype it. So if a file gets corrupted, this is also very useful, and I do highly recommend using versioning. Um, it is great even if you do have backups simply to have an extra layer of versions of files and have a set amount of files. You can configure how many versions you want based on a shared folder basis. So if certain shared folders are accessed more re regularly, if those files are edited on a much more regular basis, you can allow a higher number of versions or possibly those files are more important, you can allow more versions. And files that are less important or accessed less regularly, you can allow a lower level of versions. So once you have enabled a folder, it will now be green and show that it is enabled. So by enabling a folder, you're essentially saying that that fo shared folder can be accessed through the Drive application as a team folder. That doesn't mean that your user will necessarily have access to that yet. From there, you gotta go to the control panel. From the control panel, click on the user tab, and from there, click on the user you want to edit. Then click on the top of the screen, you'll see the edit button, Click on that and then it'll bring up the page for editing that user. Go to the permissions tab and the first thing you need to do is make sure that the user has access to the shared folder that you want them to access as a team folder through the Drive application. Of course, you probably already have this set up for your users if you use your Synology both locally as well as remotely, 
But if you're just setting up your Synology for the first time, just make sure that the user does have access to that shared folder. Otherwise, they'll never see it in their team folder. So from there, you want to go to the Applications tab. And there you need to make sure that you enable the Synology Drive access for that user. If you do have users that you don't want to access your Synology remotely through the Drive application, you can disable that for those users too here. And then even though they might have access to a certain shared folder, they will not have access through the Drive application. That's it folks. You should now have the Synology Drive application installed and configured on your Synology server. Assuming that you have enabled that shared folder as a team folder from the Drive admin console, your user has permissions to access that shared folder and your user has permission to use the Drive application, they'll now be able to use that, that Drive application on the web portal, the desktop apps, as well as the mobile apps. I will have separate videos for all of these different interfaces on how to configure them. The web portal is very simple and I've already covered that in a previous video, which I already mentioned will be linked below. But I will also have videos for the Windows client as well as the Android and iOS clients and how they work. There are some caveats with the mobile applications that are not as good as the desktop applications, but I'll cover those features in a future video. So th thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, or otherwise enjoyable, give it a big like. I do greatly appreciate your guys' support. And also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, make sure to smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Top Provoking Tech. If you did truly find this video super helpful, make sure to also share it to anyone else that you know that has a Synology NAS server so they too can be get, get, get some benefit from this video and hopefully it will help them set up their Synology server with the Drive application too. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, Zach out.